yes or no, well, no more than one minute. <laughs> Should women going through menopause take hormones or bioidentical hormones or any type of medicine to help them? That's question one. Question two, should we avoid heating oils? Do they turn into carcinogens when you heat an oil? In other words, should you put your olive oil on your, sa on your quinoa after it's cooked as opposed to cooking with it? Question three, what is an acrylamide? Does it mean that we shouldn't eat cooked food? Question four, do you recommend colonoscopies? Question five, do you recommend we learn from some of these companies about our genes and our DNA that'll analyze, analyze our DNA and genes to let us know about potential health issues? Just one minute on each. Yes, on the colonoscopies. Yes, um, on the colonoscopies. Yes, on the colonoscopy. But there is Colaguard if you're very low risk and have had a negative colonoscopy, so we're still evolving that. There's not a single randomized trial that has ever shown that colonoscopy reduces the risk of dying of colon cancer, and the Canadians took it off their list in 2016 as a result. I would tell you that I have saved people's lives like you cannot believe with colonoscopy, like unbelievably so. And a I, vegan, too. Like, I, I, unbelievably I believe, so. I believe you. But, I mean, like, so much so that I can't, I, like, they would have no. died. I understand that. I'm but getting here's, colonoscopy next but week. Here's, so. But here's the thing. <laughs> what, we have to, yeah. what we have to do is put the right data in front of the patient and let them decide. And it would be disingenuous to say that colonoscopy reduces the risk of dying of colon cancer because there are no studies saying that. And it is okay to say there are no studies saying it. Somebody may still opt to get the colonoscopy because of family history or whatever, but the bottom line is it is important to tell people the truth. That's all I'm saying. I'm sure you have, the colonoscopy does save some lives. And by the way, there are people out there, every time I give a talk, somebody stands up and says, my sister-in-law's best friends, neighbors, cousins, mothers, her, she, it saved her life to have a mammogram. I believe that's true. But when somebody is sitting in front of you saying, should I do it? I think we have to put data in front of, the, front of them and let them decide. I mean, there's some good data with Cologuard, but, but with, with colonoscopy, I mean, I can't tell you, I could take out a tiny little polyp so easily, a big mass that it will grow into is frightful. I agree. And I uh, agree. I've got a long history of colon. I, I can't get your colonoscopy. I can't emphasize. I would, I don't even like colon, I get your colonoscopy. Take the gene, I'll take the gene question in one minute. Um, you know, there's certainly no randomized studies that indicate your health will be better and you'll live longer yes. if you have extra samples drawn from saliva, blood, or whatever. I am a participant in a research study in San Diego. It's something called Human Longevity, Inc. They published results in a very prestigious journal last week called Proceeding National Academy of Science, suggesting a more aggressive approach identified earlier disease and leads to better outcome. It's a hypothesis. It's called precision medicine. If you knew your genetic risk was higher for renal cell carcinoma or for colorectal cancer, Alzheimer's, would you make some changes or see a genetic counselor? But it's a hypothesis. Um, and I think we don't know. I mean, I've been through it. You can now get some, uh, a panel of cancer genes, heart disease, pharmacogenetic genes for $200 by spitting in a cup. It was 2000 20000 just a couple years ago. So it's being priced down where it's possible for many to do it. It's your own. Do you want to know? Do you not want to know? Do you want to know if your, your gun is loaded and you have to be careful not to pull the trigger or not? And they're Partly, it's what we call shared decision-making with patients. I favor it. I do a lot of it. I guess I'll, I'll address heating oil. First of all, if you do use oils, um, they have a smoke point, and so all oils are not created equal. Uh, whenever an oil smokes, uh, you are producing products of oxidation that are par potentially carcinogenic. Um, so al acrolines, aldehydes, all sorts of things. Um, and so you, you really don't want oils to smoke. For a lot of oils, especially if they're fresh pe pressed oils with a lot of particles in them, they smoke at a very low temperature, uh, including coconut oil, by the way, that's an organic, uh, um, more natural, co there, there are particles that will smoke at a much lower temperature than a more refined oil. So if you're cooking, uh, I mean, really and truly, probably best if you use oils to not cook them, but if you are cooking them, don't let them get to a smoke point. Bioidentical hormone, yes, no? Uh, I'll take HRT. Um, 
I don't recommend it. And bioidentical hormones are no, have not been proven to be safer. Um, and a new study just came out. There are lots of studies. This is just one more. That, but this one shows that if you take hormones, either estrogen by itself, progesterone and estrogen combination, whatever it is, it increases the risk of breast cancer in a dose-dependent manner. The longer you take it, the higher the risk. And I've never had anybody sitting in my office who said, you know, I know I have breast cancer now, but all those years without hot flashes, it was so worth it. Nobody says that. So um, I, I don't think it's a great idea. If women are so miserable that they have to do this for a short time, keep it on a very short strength. The sooner you're off of it, the better, in my opinion. Okay, if everyone would take, make a 10 second closing statement. Thank you. <laughs> Eat food, only plants, not too much. Say it again. Eat food, only plants, not too much. Eating things, eating dead things will make you dead. So eat plants and live. Uh, ditto. Thank you, guys. And I'll, I'll just leave you with saying that I've uh, enjoyed the privilege of meeting so many of you and being part of uh, the panel and uh, getting to know my co-speakers. Um, and, and thank you, Steve, for the amazing work you're doing. Thank you.